Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna show you something only Frost can do. We have another unique interaction going on here, and it helps some weapons shine even stronger. If you like red crits, then this video might be just for you. A few months ago, the third wave in Karnons released. This included Gorgon, Angstrom, Gamacore, Boar, and Anku in Karnons. A couple of updates have passed since then, with some receiving bug fixes and buffs. I'll probably get around to covering them individually still in the future, but today we are going to be looking at an interaction that only occurs on these weapons. Thank you, Kronk, for raising this idea to me and showing me how it works, and I can confirm after testing that no other Incarnon does this in the entire game, nor any normal weapons. Specifically, what I'm about to show you only applies to third wave Incarnon guns and only in Incarnon mode, and only if the Incarnon mode shoots projectile bullets. That's quite specific, isn't it? This means Boar, which is both a hitscan and shotgun, and a hitscan beam in Incarnon mode is ruled out. Anku, being a melee and of course using completely different mods, is also ruled out. I tested every single projectile in Karnon weapon I own from first and second wave, and while there were one or two I'm missing, I can confirm that all first and a second wave projectile bullet in Karnon modes do not do what you see today. In other words, this is unique to the Angstrom, Gamacore, and Gorgon in Karnons, making them significantly stronger and quite fun to play. Most notably, this is important for Gamacore, since it is the weakest out of the five in the third wave, lacking damage, grouping AoE, and blast radius with the grouping AoE also not scaling with primed fulmination. So what exactly is this interaction? It's simple. Frost Augment, Biting Frost, grants plus 200% crit chance and crit damage, like a normal weapon mod to frozen enemies. This can most reliably occur from Avalanche or Cold Thermal Sunder. They have to be actually frozen and not just max cold stacks. Honestly, I take this as an opportunity to suggest having Frost Passive changed so that anything on your loadout that applies max cold stacks should freeze the enemy bead weapons, or abilities. On 99.9% .9 of the weapons in the game, this augment works as expected and is additive to typical crit mons on the weapon. But on Angstrom, Gamacore, and Gorgon's Incarnon mode, it doesn't. Instead, the critical chance from Biting Frost acts like a final crit chance multiplier. Yes, it straight up adds plus 200% of your current total crit chance. In other words, it takes your total crit and goes times 3. All of these weapons can reach 100% crit chance on Incarnon mode, except Gamacore, meaning with plus 200% total crit chance, they're all above 300% for only reds. Pretty numbers, massive DPS increase alongside the plus 200% crit damage Biting Frost also gives, and easily destroys everything. Especially because Frost also armor strips, letting these setups easily scale up to level 9k with ease. A freeze, strip, and fat crit buffs all in one go. What's not to like? This of course changes builds options slightly, and for Gorgon and Gamacore today, which are primarily AoE weapons in Incarnon mode, I'll be taking gas. Without armor, enemies can die very quickly. Gas clouds linger and can continue to kill enemies in crowds even when the original victim has died, allowing you to instantly clean out crowds with the high status chance these weapons already have. Also, even a fully armored acolyte stepping into a group of 10 plus gas clouds will still get instantly annihilated. Also, during Frost rework nearly a year ago, Avalanche was changed to be able to strip armor even from enemies that cannot be frozen, such as acolytes. So feel free to cast Avalanche in their vicinity, drag enemies onto them for body block, and hit all of them with a nuke instant dead acolyte, or you can just path them into gas clouds. The reason why I'm still going for air burst on this frost is because the 5 meter suck on Gamacore is unaffected by primed fulmination. Gorgon also only has a 5 meter AoE. Air burst is base 8 meter AoE, and on this build I have an 18.8 meter radial suck. That's 353 meters squared of suck area in a flat circle, whereas Gamacore only has 25 meters squared suck. I literally suck off 14 times more Grenier with Air Burst than the natural grouping of Gamacore, letting me get much, much better KPM. Just make sure you freeze before you suck, since sucking before it freeze leads to some awkward hitboxes. Sometimes it makes you gain damage, sometimes it makes you lose. Just for reliability and much bigger crowd control because it even goes through walls, I recommend casting Avalanche first. 
It's also your main shield gate ability with a Decay Dragon key, setting up DPS, and regenerating shields all at once. But what weapon variants do you take? This one is pretty simple. You take Prisma Gorgon because post-patch, it has the shortest embed delay on the Incarnon mode at 0.8 seconds. The reason why people don't use the lens much, and also the Prisma lens, is because of the embed delay before the explosion. Therefore, the best Gorgon is automatically the one that has the fastest explosion since this means less time for enemies to shoot back. Less time to know before you need to shoot them again, etc. Just better combat flow. It also has the best overall crit and status with Incarnon Perk, so it's a no-brainer. There are only two Gamma Cores, Ordinary and the Syndicate Sinoid. The Sinoid variant is significantly better than the regular, primarily the 12% higher base crit chance, which is important since we're building for red crits. The Incarnon Perks just can't close the gap to the Sinoid, so that is the one we will pick. Angstrom does not have massive differences in crit and status and same overall damage. Rather, the difference lies in the Prisma variant having a much faster charge time and reload speed. Therefore, we of course pick Prisma Angstrom. Now let's look at the Frost build before the weapons. As I said, this is a shield gating Frost with Decay Dragon Key. We have insane range, so every single time you cast Avalanche, it basically goes through walls for 40 meters, freezing everything, and can even strip armor if enemies cannot be frozen, such as Xmas, Acolyte, and Demless and we can make enemies paper thin while restoring all our shields. This is done by Brief Respite and Augur Secrets on the build for 190% energy to shield conversion. This build runs streamlined for 130 efficiency and arcane energize to sustain. There are many alternative mod options on the setup I'll show later, but you need 167 strength to full strip in a single cast with Avalanche. This is achieved with Molta Augmented plus 60% and Matterai Sling Strength granting plus 40% power strength on a double Void Sling that lasts 20 seconds. If you don't want to rely on Sling Strength, just run some strength shards. This particular build reaches 64% strength without any shards. To reach 167, you can either run Madrine with Augmented and use a rank 4 over extended, which drops range to 220 for increasing base strength to 74, or you could also just run rank 5 over extended but use one Archon Strength shard. You can also use Anger Reach and run Umbral Intensify instead and not need any shards so long as you use Malt Augmented and Matarai. If you run Casting Speed Shards instead of Natural Talents, you can run Augur Secrets and Umbral Intensify together, increasing base strength to 108. This can reach 168 with just Malt Augmented and wouldn't even need Matarai Sling Strength buff. Lots of mix and match, as I said, to hit 167. If you do not have Arcane Energize, I have one other setup. Replace Strength with Augur Reach. Use 2 times Casting Speed Archon Shards. Replace Natural Talent with Augur Message. Replace Streamline with a Rank 4, yes, Rank 4 Fleeting Expertise. Now Avalanche costs 50 to cast only, and you have 270% Energy to Shield Conversion, which means it grants 135 shields to fully reset your shield gate on cast. This is without needing 2 Augur mods on your pistol, since I'm assuming we're bringing a DPS Gamma Core or Angstrom today, instead of our usual Epitaph Primer stat stick with 2 Augurs. This with the Equilibrium and a Panzer should be more than enough without Energize. Now you can run whatever you want in the Energize slot, beat Arcane Aegis for more safety, or fire raid Arcanes for your weapons. I have replaced Frost 1 for Air Burst, since grouping is the only thing Frost lacks for a gun build. It makes it much easier to kill groups to optimize KPM and least shots, and more importantly, on AoE and Karnon weapons allow you to maximize ammo efficiency. Get the most amount of kills per shot so that you spend as little time as possible needing to recharge your Incarnon meter. At 235 range, Air Burst has 18.8 meter suck. On the alternative setups at 220 range, it still has 17.6 meter suck. Our Panzer is a very standard build setup. Viral Quills to tag Crowns and Spread Spores, which all count as Pedasys to activate Synth Deconstruct and Fiber to turn Health Orbs into Energy via Equilibrium, which you can still pick up even at full HP. We have Martyr to save you, Devolution to save itself, Radar, and Vacuum. Our weapon builds today are rather similar. Gamacorn and Gorgon are AoE projectile weapons in Incarnon mode with high crit and status. Therefore, since we're using a grouping setup with full strip, the best way to kill is with overlapping gas clouds on quadratic scaling DPS. Gas also does poopy damage against armor and shields. So in normal mode, it is easier to charge Incarnon meter since enemies take longer to die. Each weapon I will go over their Incarnon perks as well, but I will not be going in-depth in perk trees since that will be saved for the respective weapon videos. 
Let's look at our Gamma Core first. Gamma Core is using the Infused Shots perk for extra damage since Frost is cast heavy anyways. Moonrise Velocity is our third perk so our beam reaches further and a Survivor's Edge boosts up our crits while also making gas procs more reliable. Galvanized Shot is only here for the status chance to hit 100%. This lets us consistently proc on every multi-shot hit with main gas weight. It also makes the direct hit produce a stronger gas cloud since that is boosted by Gun Seal's base damage buff. Prime Fulmination is our flex slot since Hammer Shot doesn't exist on pistols. You could run Hornet Strike here if you want more damage since a Sharpened Bullet is only a plus 75% on top of the 210% crit damage scaling we already have, whereas Hornet Strike adds 220% to our 460% base damage scaling if you include Merciless. And then of course, the Heat and Toxin 6060 mods to make gas. Prime Dick Spell is important to double dip gas clouds for 2.4 times more damage scaling. Crit pushes us to roughly 75% crit chance, and Biting Frost will triple this to roughly 225 for split oranges and reds, and that's it. A recent patch made the normal mode beam a charge meter faster, so all you do is tag some heads and then freeze, group, shoot. 15 shots is enough for 15 crowds, take your time and chill. Merciless for ease of use AoE scaling and faster transformation animation from bonus reload speed. Our Gorgon is using Hoplite Virtue for second perk because shields break always. Rapid Reinforcement for a faster transformation animation and Absolute Valor for a third perk to push us to 33 base crit chance. This is required for Gorgon to hit 300% for constant red crits. The build looks extremely similar to our Gamma Core. This is because we're building again for hybrid crits and status gas. The Galvanized Shot and Primed Fulmination or Hornet Strike Flex slots are instead replaced with Amalgam Serration for faster sprint speed, quality of life, and more damage out the gates, and Hammer Shot, which grants a ton of extra status for more consistent gas clouds with even more bonus crit damage. Primed Bane once again for double dip 2.4 times gas cloud scaling and our typical double crit mods. That boosts us to 99% crit chance, which is tripled with Biting Frost at 297%, and the typical 2 60 60 mods to make gas. While we don't reach 100% status, 297% crit chance with 63% status is good enough. We take Merciless since, well, our gun is our main DPS, and you aren't seriously trying to tell me you aim at headshots, are you? The reload speed also helps the transformation animation speed. Our other Incarnon pistol today is Angstrom, which fires ricocheting homing bullets. Because it is not an AoE weapon and enemies are full stripped, the best DPS option is going to be Viral. Viral has bonus damage against Flesh and inflicting Viral procs will further boost our damage in general. Against stuff like Corpus, you don't even need to change elements because Angstrom still outputs quite a lot of damage. But more importantly, Biting Frost forces it into supercharged red crits for ridiculous scaling. If anything, charging in normal mode is easier since raw viral against armor or shields is not a particularly strong damage type, making it require more shots to kill and thus less enemies to get enough headshots for your Incarnon meter. Our Angstrom is using Haven Foray since this is an ability heavy build with constant crowd control and overshield regen. We pick Rapid Reinforcement since enemies are locked in spots so all I want is that faster transformation speed and reload if I whip in normal mode. Oh yeah, Angstrom charges on body shots now, and only needs 3. So we pick Critical Parallel so that we can reach 300% crit for reds everywhere. This setup is a little bit different than the others. Since Angstrom is not AoE on Incarnon mode, I built Viral Heat. A Viral replaces the 2 mods originally spent on gas, and the Hornet Strike Prime Fulmination Flex slot is now Prime T to charge. Gun Seal actually buffs our damage overall, since not only is Angstrom not AoE in scales properly, but Gun CO also has multiplicative final damage scaling on Angstrom bullets like Eclipse, instead of normal base damage scaling like Hornet Strike. On a bullet hose weapon, 57% status with multi-shot is more than enough to inflict viral procs to boost our damage. Prime T to charge not only adds a ton of heat, but a source of crowd control to on our ricochet homing shots. Prime to expel is not as important here since only single dipping our raw viral for 1.55 times damage, but still does double dip the heat dots for 2.4 times. Since we kill with primarily Varon damage, we take Deadhead for longer lasting 24 second stacks and only needing 3 kills to max out the 360% base damage as well as 1.3 times headshot scaling. 
Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are unsubscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like we've been doing since the Duveri and TanoCon 2023. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis, you don't want to miss out on any of that do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time!